Hello everyone, Chris here, and today I'm going to quickly demonstrate to you how you can create a PowerPoint presentation in PowerPoint 2016. I'll also be trying to show off some of the features of PowerPoint 2016, since a lot of people may be interested in that and learning more about it. So whenever you boot up PowerPoint 2016, or any other version of PowerPoint really, you would go to the File tab and New in order to select a template to start from. Now you can just choose a blank presentation in which everything is blank obviously nothing is um, in the background and the fonts are just very generic and standard or you can choose one of these themes over here you can even search online using this search bar to basically bring in an online theme for you to use on your powerpoint in this case we're going to select one of the themes here i'm actually going to try berlin this time and when you ch when you select one of your themes you often have different color variants you can choose from. For instance, if I don't want it to be orange Berlin, I could have a blue alternative to it, green or purple. Some of these themes even come with eight different uh, color variants. So you can play around with it a little bit and always customize it later within uh, PowerPoint 2016 if you want to. Now, uh, once you go ahead and create your PowerPoint presentation, you're going to be given a title slide by default and uh, we can go ahead and add a title here so i'm just going to call it powerpoint 2016 2016 for beginners and that that title is actually a little bit big so we're going to shrink that down to just powerpoint 2016 and we'll say chris's tutorials in which case there would actually be an apostrophe and possibly an s depends on how you want to spell it okay so now we can add more slides and how we would do that is by either hitting new slide up here on the home tab or right clicking on this pane over here and hitting new slide you'll notice that the second slide you create is going to actually be a title and content slide layout and you can tell what kind of layout the slide is by going up to slides over here clicking on it and you can see this is a title and content slide we can change this to basically any of these other uh, slide layouts and different themes are going to actually have different slide layouts so what you see here in Berlin like this three picture column may not actually be in one of the other slide layouts or slide themes rather so we'll leave this as a title and content right here and we'll start working on a bulleted list so let's just call this slide bulleted list now down here you see that basically uh, this is a content box we have the option to either add text or add a table a chart smart art graphics pictures online pictures or video files now you'll notice that these two icons have basically a picture of the web or a globe on them and that's because using these you can actually pull pictures or videos in from online videos of course going to be youtube um, picture is going to be the bing search engine and it'll give you creative commons images when you go ahead and search in this slide, we're just going to go ahead and do a bulleted list. So clicking to add text defaults to a bulleted list up here. You can see that we're working in a bulleted list on the paragraph section. Uh, of course, we could turn that off by clicking this. Uh, we'll add in some points. So let's just make it really simple here. Point one, point two, point three. We'll click out of that and yep that'll be fine for that now if you don't want bulleted points you always have the option on the home tab of choosing numbered points instead so numbered list is going to have numbers bulleted points obviously going to be those little dots not every theme is actually going to have the dots though um some themes remove that entirely but they can still be a list without the dots okay uh, let's move on to the next slide so new slide here and in this one we'll go ahead and change it to let's say comparison where we have these content boxes and above them subtitle boxes that we can use to basically tell us what is what's contained in these boxes what is this about and we'll be comparing two online images in this slide so apples versus oranges is going to be the slide we'll put apples here in this title and oranges and now we'll use the online pictures to go dig up some images, one of an apple and one of a orange. All right, that's good. Now, uh, the alignment of the text is not exactly great, I would say here. So what we're going to do is click on each of these titles and center them to basically put the text right on top of where the images are located. So here we'll center that. 
and we'll also center the overall title as well. So I think that makes this slide look a little bit better. Let's make a new slide. And we'll try playing around with one of these options. A three picture column is actually one I haven't really seen because I think that's pretty specific to this Berlin thing. But um, whenever you try one of the slide layouts, they'll pretty much always tell you exactly what you need to do here. So you add pictures to this slide, I mean, this uh, content box, this one, this one as well. And then it looks like you can title the picture and add in some extra information describing the pictures over there as well. Um, since we already demonstrated finding online pictures or pictures from our computer, we'll actually just skip that slide, but you get the idea. Uh, different slide layouts, they designate different areas and different boxes for you to add different kinds of content to it. However, anytime you have a slide and you want to basically add your own stuff because you don't like the slide layout, um, you can always go to the insert tab here. And I, I did just change this slide layout to blank to demonstrate this. And on the insert tab, you can add in basically whatever you want any way you want. So if you want a text box, just click text box, left click, drag your rectangle, let go, and you have a text box. Um, of course, from there, you can change the font size, the type of font, you can bold, underline, italicize, basically all the same kinds of things you would be able to do in, say, Microsoft Word 2016. So let's go ahead and demonstrate another thing you may want to add to your PowerPoint presentations, and that's going to be a table. Uh, you'll notice down here at the bottom of this table drop down list that you can actually add in Excel spreadsheets into PowerPoint 2016. So the different office applications actually interact with each other. In some cases, Excel spreadsheets being one of them. Uh, in this case, we'll just do a standard table, which is just fine for most purposes. And we'll do a four by five. So on these header areas, uh, we can go ahead and put in titles for each of these columns. If you want to say remove the header row because you don't need it, you can just click up there. Uh, banded rows is referring to, uh, you see how the colors alternate every row. That's basically just to make it easier to read. So we'll just choose from these different table styles and uh, let's go with this red one. I like that a lot. So we have uh, title one, title two, title three, title four. We could even have a total row where we basically add up all of the different points here to basically get a total. So if we were doing dollar signs over here, we could say this is five dollars. This is uh, this is fifteen dollars, and then we have twenty-five dollars over here. You add those together, and you get uh, twenty plus twenty-five, so that's forty-five. If you're gonna, you know, have totals for these, and generally the thing you're gonna be totaling is gonna be numeric, obviously. But you get the idea. You can kind of play around with that. You can also have uh, these different highlights be in the columns instead. So if you want first column instead of a header row, you could do that very easily. One more thing I want to summarize in this video here is going to be transitions and animations simply because they make your slides look better. So whenever you want to actually present your slide, like you're ready to do it or you're ready to test it, you go to the slideshow tab and we can do from beginning here and click through the slides. But you see by default, it just instantly trans, it, well, it doesn't even transition. It just instantly pops between the screens. And what we want is a transition where it kind of smooths into the different uh, slides. And that can make it look a little bit nicer, a little bit cleaner, a little bit more professional, or in some cases, a little bit more interesting. Because on the transitions tab, you can click on the more box to see all your transitions. You have two sets of transitions, the subtle ones and the exciting ones. The exciting ones actually are pretty interesting to look at. So let's go ahead and find one. I like honeycomb a lot. So we'll go ahead and select this. And now whenever this slide pops up in our presentation, it's going to do that effect instead of just instantly popping to the new screen. We could add another transition over here. Let's say just split for inst instance. This is one of the more subtle ones. So they're not really nearly as interesting curtains. I, I, I like that one. Actually, that's pretty cool. And let's say ripple. And now we can go back to slideshow, view them all. And when I click between the slides, it's going to do the transition. It's not going to instantly pop between the slides. And that just makes it look a lot cooler, especially if you add music in or that sort of thing. Apples versus oranges. Okay. And we go to the next slide. You have the curtain effect. You get the idea.
So if we actually wanted to add in background music to our presentation, we could go to insert audio and then audio on my PC where you've already downloaded a music file. For instance, we have Spy Glass here by Kevin McLeod, uh, Creative Commons music, and I love his stuff. So we'll add Spy Glass here. And when you add music or audio, it will give you this little player, which you would actually need to click on by default, but you can change things around here. So we can actually play across all slides or really automatically over here. If we call this actually a way to style, yes, right, play in background. So if we have it play in background, it's pretty much actually going to uh, take all of these options over here and set them to what you would need for background music. So just do that immediately. And now it's going to hide during slow uh, show loop until stopped start automatically. That's what we want. We can even move this off slide because it's not really necessary to see it uh, since it's just going to be playing in the background. All right, so let's go ahead and test it out from the beginning. And you can see our music's playing. How cool is that? As we go between the different slides, it's still going to be playing. Our transitions are working. Everything is actually really nice. I mean, PowerPoint has come a long way in the last couple decades. So, in any case, I've been Chris. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them down below. And until the next video, I will see you then.